Good morning. On um, this cold morning, um, I know that there'll be other people joining us and I just want to thank you guys for coming on and it's going to be a little bit of a different morning this morning. Uh, we're going to kind of do everything through Zoom and um, I just want to welcome people that are coming in and uh, yeah, uh, I don't know about you, but I'm ready for the winter, cold part of the winter uh, to be over. Uh, because I'm uh, I'm not a cold person. I don't like the cold and my body is consistently cold anyways. And uh, so regardless if it's plus 40, I still feel that cold on my body sometimes, believe it or not. So when it's minus 27 and minus 34, I don't really like uh, that at all. And so I just, uh, you know, at least if we could get up in the minus five uh, for the rest of the winter, I could probably deal with that pretty good. So I bundle up pretty, pretty good for that and dress in layers many times. Um, so I just want to thank everybody for being here and welcome you. And I know there are going to be other people that are going to be joining us uh, as we go. Uh, but I hopefully they all just realize that we just want to welcome everybody. It's going to be a little bit, a little bit different. I'm going to open in prayer in a few moments and, um, then uh, Steve and Julie, Colby and Leah are at their house, and they're going to lead us in some worship. And uh, so this is a learning game for me because it's totally out of my comfort zone. Uh, but Roger, uh, pastor, is not feeling great. So uh, he just felt that he didn't want to come on uh, this morning and, um, you know, maybe be coughing and stuff like that. So I just want to let you know that thus far he has... Uh, tested negative. And so that's good. I'm trying to dodge that bullet. And so uh, anyway, so far he is negative and that's wonderful news, but he does have a bit of something going on with his throat and everything. So we're just trying to rest that voice uh, today so that it doesn't get worse. So I'm just going to open in prayer and I'm going to pass it over to Steve and Julie and the kids, and they're going to lead us in a few songs. So I just Thank God that you are here today. So let's just open it here. Father, I just want to thank you for our two church families and Prescott. And so, God, I just pray that you would be with each one of them. I pray that as we just maybe put everything else aside that's in our heads right now, uh, there's going to be come a time in a little while that we're going to pray for people. But God, for right now, I just ask that you would help us to put all the other stuff that's happening in our lives and in the world aside. I pray that nothing would distract us from what you would want to say to us and that refreshing that comes from worshiping and praising you. And so, God, I just thank you for each person who's here. I pray your spirit would be with them. And I pray that we would know that you're with each one of us in Jesus' name. So, Julie, Steve, Colby and Leah, welcome, and uh, it's take it from here, guys. Hey, well, good morning, uh, church. Great to uh, look at the iPad this morning, uh, and uh, this is going to be very weird for us, too. We're in our basement, and uh, I'm wearing my, my slippers, and I think Colby's got his slippers on, too, so uh, it's, it's a very comfortable setting for us, but we would definitely rather be at church, in front of everybody, gathered together, worshiping God. Um, yeah, I just want to just uh, mention that all the uh, strings of my guitar were recently changed, so the tuning's good. That's uh, the E string, A, D, G, and the B, and the E. So all of my strings recently were changed, they're all tuned, and uh, not just the one string that Julie was talking about last week in her message. So anyway, um, I want to also just uh, encourage everybody, um, that uh, we are coming together uh, online. Um, I feel like we're all going through our different set of trials right now. Uh, and, and I know us and our family, uh, we've, we've had a lot of sickness in our family. I wanna thank everyone for their continuous prayers and their text messages for my family members. And I uh, just wanna appreciate that and just say thank you for that. Um, we are all in our own set of trials right now. I just wanna read from First Peter chapter one, three to six, or sorry, six to nine. It's uh, so true. So be truly glad there is wonderful joy ahead. 
Even though you must endure many trials for a little while, these trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. And it goes on to say, you love him even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him and you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. So I just wanted to read that this morning. I just think it's very encouraging uh, to read that this morning. It's, it's really encouraging for me and I hope it encourages you as well. And that last part talking about inexpressible joy, we're going to sing the song, Joy of the Lord. We picked a few songs that you probably know without the words on the screen. So sing along. We're going to sing about the inexpressible joy that we have within us. That's God's joy. He's our strength. Amen. So let's sing a few songs together and worship God. Steve, that's a great way to start, especially for what I'm going to share in a few moments with de my devotional. Uh, but I just want to let you and Colby know that when I was getting ready to go on screen today, I actually debated putting my heels on. I, I kid you not. I thought, I, I can't do this without my heels. And then God quickly reminded me that you can't do this without me, but you can do it without your heels. So I have my slippers on. <laughs> Slipper strong, right? Um, okay, so I'm just going to give a few announcements um, before I, I do a few prayer requests, which are vitally, vitally important this morning. So after Monday, that's after tomorrow, 
unless something changes, we can start our small groups back up again, our life groups, our life fellowship groups that are so vitally important. They can start back up after Monday. So just keep that in mind. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to say that, Roger. Uh, anyway, Sunday, Roger's in the background, giving, being in the peanut gallery. So I'm just not going to pay attention to him right now. Sunday service will be up and running next week. Uh, as per schedule on our normal schedule. I just want to remind people of that just down today. And we're going to talk about that in a few minutes when we talk about prayer. Uh, also, just a reminder that we can still e-transfer for those of you who give to either of the churches, Seaway Church or Cardinal Church, you can still e-transfer or you can make other arrangements uh, by reaching out to one of those churches to see how that can be done. And so and we want to thank you for that consistent giving because, um, you know, that that's good for you and it's good for the both churches as well. Okay, so that's our announcements. That's really all I have for that. I want to bring a few prayer requests that are kind of really important. Well, they all are, but they're vitally important. So just, I know Roger was sending out some um, uh, emails yesterday to keep people updated on what's happening with the two churches. Uh, but I know you would have uh, heard us talk in the last few weeks about Jackie's husband, Jacques. And uh, so she was called yesterday and had to go to the hospital because they'd given him a very short uh, period of time to live. And so she went in and last night he passed. And so let's just keep Jackie and her family in prayer. They would need us at this time. It's such a time when, you know, you're not even sure if you can go or if you can't go and who can be with those people. Uh, so let's just ask that God would just continue to uphold her and be with her in this grief. And you know what? Even though we can't go, we can reach out by a phone call or a card. And so just to let her know that we are thinking about her. I know Steve, who was, who was leading our worship this morning, his mom's going for an emergency uh, surgery today, and it has to do with bleeding. And so, you know what, guys, we really need to pray that God is with her today and with the surgeon, that they would just know exactly what to do. The, his hands would be, or her hands, whoever that surgeon is, God would just be with them and, and be on all of that with that surgery. So we just want to pray for her as well. Also, uh, Bob George is really not well, and we need to continue to pray for Bob. So he is meeting with uh, the medical oncologist, radiologist, and a surgeon on Thursday. And so let's just continue to pray for that family. I feel like they've just been overwhelmed with one thing after another. And so let's just pray for them. Let's pray for Janice and Troy and George. And let's just continue to keep that family in our prayers. Let's not get weary in praying for people. God wants us to just con consistently, God does not get bored with us going to him in prayer. He never does. So let's just continue to do that. Also, John and Barbara uh, Beanstra and Cheryl uh, Dake needs our prayers. And in both of our services, there are people that are sick. Like a flu bug, some people are negative for uh, COVID, but they're very ill. And so, and then some people are testing positive. So let's pray for those people and let's passionately go before God and ask God to just touch them. So I'm just going to leave you, actually, I don't know, maybe Julie, if you wouldn't mind, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to mute me and I'm going to get you to uh, take, I know you might not remember everybody. And that's okay because we've spoken them and God knows them anyway. So that don't worry about that. But I'm just going to get you to go ahead, pray for those people. And then you guys can just lead us in some worship after that. God bless you. Lord, we just, we just ask Lord that you just have your hand on every single person, Jesus. Father, we just know that you have the power to give peace to those who've lost Lord, your special hand and your special peace upon Janice and all she's gone through, Father, and your, her whole family. May they just feel your presence and feel your anointing, Lord. And Bob, God, just have your hand upon him. There is nothing impossible with you, Lord, and we just have you to have your hand upon him. And if there is healing, heal him, Lord. Hallelujah, Father. We know that's possible. 
and may they just be able to um, have peace in that family. They've gone through so much. Father, have your hand upon them. We just ask you to be with Joanne, um, Steve's mom, this morning as she's going through emergency surgery, God. And we just know that you're with her. And we just ask that your Holy Spirit just work through those surgeons, Jesus. And we just know, Father, that she is in your capable hands, Father. And may no harm come to her, Father. And we just ask that your angels just surround everybody who needs your strength this morning, who's not feeling well, who have lost loved ones, who just needs your presence. And may we just feel that right now, Lord, as you take us through into worship, Lord. And we just thank you so much for all you're going to do. Amen. So I do want to mention to you, I was trying to do a nice thing this morning. <laughs> and it sort of backfired. I was making this beautiful casserole and I was so happy. It, it all worked out. I had all the ingredients. It's just not often things work out like that for me. And I was about to put it in the oven and I dropped it all over the floor. It ended up exploding. I've never seen an explosion like it before. It was in my hair. I think it still is. I had to change my outfit and it was just all over. And that's kind of how we feel sometimes. Just like we're all over. We're all over the place and there is nothing that God can't do to comfort us and to put us back together piece by piece and as we just go into worship and, and as we're in our own homes praising Jesus may we just let God just do what he has for us this morning just as comfort and and just take us to where we need to go as we we can raise our hands we can dance we can praise our Lord and your and we'll just have a wonderful moment of worship all right <laughs>
can sing how great our Lord is. We serve a great God. Amen. Let's lift up our voices. Give life to our love. You bring light to the dark.
There's no definition that says worship has to be in a temple or in a church building. Every time I seek the meaning of worship, God, it's nothing to do with location, God, but it's everything to do with our hearts. Our hearts and our intentions, God, that we want to come to know you more. We want to praise you. We want to honor you and glorify you. It doesn't matter where we are. We thank you, Jesus, for being with us. That's awesome. Thank you so much uh, for leading us. And you can definitely, you enter in, you, it's no problem to feel the spirit of God. And so I just want to thank you guys uh, for lead us, leading us in that worship this morning. And I'm not going to be very long uh, because this just happened to me yesterday. So this is like huge for me. And so I do want to say to you though, and Roger would really, really like for you to know that he even, even though he had come in contact last week with a few cases that were uh, end up testing positive, if he didn't get sick himself, he probably would have had church because it would have maybe just, you know, that he didn't even, it wouldn't have uh, connected with him or, you know, had anything to do with him. But because he wasn't feeling well, he was not willing to risk either of the congregations and the people that are in those congregations. So that's why um, today we are actually doing everything online and not in person. Uh, but just so you know, um, it will be back in person next week. So just bear with us. We are your safety and your wellness. Like we never want to be um, the people that spread that into uh, your home or uh, your life, especially those that are vulnerable. And so just bear with us with that. And we just want to appreciate and thank you guys for understanding that. So I'm just going to share a little bit of my devotions. Um, in the new year, I just felt that um, God was showing me that my uh, spiritual life uh, was somewhat parched. And so I don't know what you're like when you don't drink a lot of water in the day, but I drink a lot of water. I 90% of the time I have a way bigger jug than this uh, beside me at work, at home. Sometimes I have two going at the same time. Uh, and I feel parched when I don't drink water. And uh, my spirit's been parched uh, recently. And so uh, I just felt at the beginning of the year to do this devotion. And it's actually called Downpour, which was very interesting that Chuck uh, Price came in and talked to us about, um, it's very hard to stay still when you're sitting. I'm just noticing that I want to move around. And so, um, you know, Chuck came in and talked to us also about a downpour. And so I just want to, um, I just want to talk to you about it, just a few things, because there's too much that's happening uh, in my devotion right now. So I'm just going to talk to you about a couple of things. And I, I kind of went looking and I was like, OK, why why do I feel so dry in my spirit? You know, and I know that we haven't been able to get away and have like a spiritual weekend. And and, you know, we're often used to doing stuff like that, a ladies event where you can go together and you're of the same mind and you have someone come in and share and you have that spiritual aspect that happens to you that just gives you that life. And and it's like getting a fresh drink of water. And so I just want to share a few things with you. Some uh, 119 and 107 says, revive me according to your word. And that's one of the things that stood out to me. And like I said, I'm not going to tell you everything. That's kind of because it'd take too long. Um, revive me according to your word. And then Psalm 119.37 says, revive me in your ways. And I made a statement to Roger, oh, I'm going to say a couple of weeks ago. And I said to him, it's hard to be revived if you've never been vibed. And so I feel like you get vibed when you come to know Jesus, but sometimes we're trying to revive other people that maybe have never been vibed in the, in the first place. And that's kind of hard to say, it's like a tongue twister. But anyway, I really know that I've been vibed. I know Jesus, I have a relationship with God. And so, but sometimes my spirit gets dry and, and there's reasons for that. And so, um, I don't know about you, but I get away from measuring things according to the word of God. 
And that that scripture in one uh, verse 107 says, revive me according to your word. And so sometimes I get away from uh, uh, measuring things according to the word of God. And so instead, I will um, measure it according to Facebook or some other media platform that I'm involved in. And, and, and that's not what the word of God is telling us to do here. So uh, it's easier to measure according to Facebook because I can look you know, pretty good compared to some of that stuff. But according to God's word, it's not so easy. So uh, because Facebook and other media platforms and I'm not, I'm not dissing Facebook. I'm just saying, I'm just using it as an example today. Those platforms don't demand anything from me. They don't demand a change in my life, but God's word does. And so that's where this is coming from this morning. And this is where my heart is going today. And so the word will create a renewed hunger for obedience to God social media will not ever demand that. And I don't even care how many platforms you have on your social media that's Christian, very rarely are they going to always, it, the, the media platform itself will not demand obedience to God. That's what I'm saying. Or commitment to prayer. Uh, they're not going to put that pressure on you on, on Facebook. So my goal this year is to pursue the one who can make my life more than I can even imagine or think. That's my goal this year. And so last year I had a separate goal. This year it's a different goal. Not that those things aren't important. They are vitally important. But I have to start by reacquainting myself with who he is. And so I need to reacquaint myself with who God is. And I don't know about you. But I know that even though God wants to pour his spirit on me, there are times that I put up an umbrella. And so that umbrella may have words on the top. You know how they're all sectioned off? May have words on the top that say complacency. Might be a word that says busyness. It might be a word that says family, because I'm putting family before being filled with the spirit of God. If my umbrella uh, closes and God, or if I put it away and I allow God to pour a spirit on me because of all those other things, then my life is going to change. I'm going to read to you, this is probably the main place that I'm staying in this whole devotion. And I think I'm going to read the whole 13 verses. I wasn't going to, but I think I will, but I'm not going to share the whole 13 verses because the chapter is too loaded for that, but maybe it'll give you a hunger as well. So it's Isaiah 6. And Isaiah 6, and look, I'm going to read it out of my, my big old uh, New Living Trend, uh, New King James Version. I usually I read out of the New Living, I uh, know, no, the New American Standard, but this one is my New King James Version, Old Manual Bible. This is where I've been looking at in the last few weeks. So Isaiah 6. If you have your Bibles close, look them up, mark it up. In the year that King Uzziah died, I'm going to lift my Bible so I can actually not be looking down all the time. I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two, he covered his face. With two, he covered his feet. And with two, he flew. And one cried to another and said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out. And the house was filled with smoke. So I said, woe is me, for I am undone. Because I am a man of unclean lips. That's me. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with the tongues 
from the altar and he touched my mouth with it and said, behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin is purged. Like that's exciting. And also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And then I said, here am I, send me. And he said, go and tell this people, keep on hearing, but do not uh, go and tell this people who keep on hearing, but do not understand, keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the heart of this people dull and their ears heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and return and be healed. Then I said, Lord, how long? And he answered, until the cities are laid waste and without inhabitant. The house, the houses are without a man. The land is utterly desolate. The Lord has removed men far away and the forsaken places are many in the midst of the land, but yet a tenth will be in it and will return and be for consuming as terebinth tree or as an oak whose stump remains when it cut down. So the holy seed shall be its stump. And we know who that is, right? Out of the stump of David. Okay, so I read that to you. So this chapter is loaded, but I just want to zero in right now on one thing, and that's God. That's a good thing to zero in on. I want you to see from this scripture that he is sitting on the throne. So in God fashion, I call it. That's what I did when I, when I wrote my notes a week or so ago. I said, he's sitting on the throne in God fashion. And let's not forget that he's not up there pacing back and forth, wringing his hands like we sometimes do when we're stressed or worried. He's not doing that because you know why? He's still in control. He's not worried about what's happening on Parliament Hill right now. He's not happening. He's not worried about the pandemic. It did not throw him for a loop. COVID one, two, three, four, or five didn't throw, throw God for a loop. He's still sitting on the throne. He's not pacing back and forth. I love that I saw that. He's still in control. Here's something else that I really, really was amazed at. His train filled the temple. Okay, a train is a symbol of splendor. A wedding dress with a long train is representative of this. And I thought right away when I read this about Princess Diana and her beautiful wedding dress and her beautiful train that filled, well, it didn't fill the temple, but it flowed down through the aisle of the church where she walked up. And sometimes a train is so long and splendorous that that's why the bride needs a bridesmaid or bridesmaids to help her move because it's just so splendorous. And so I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that the length of it had anything to do with the splendor. God's train, now get this, filled the temple. I don't know how big that temple was, but I do know this. It, God's word says it filled the temple. So all I could see in my head was his train flowing back and forth, back and forth, layer by layer by layer by layer, because it didn't just fill the floor, it filled the temple. So how splendorous is God? So let's get our eyes on that God, not the God that we fabricated in our own heads. It filled the temple, filled it. Now, that's what I call splendor. He is holy. He is completely not like me. Just so you know, he's different. He does not compare to me at all. Completely holy. He is high and exalted or lifted up. He is exclusive. He is unparalleled. He is unprecedented. And we may have lost the transcendence of holiness. Maybe. 
in, in the day that we live. I sent this text to someone last week. I didn't really expect a response from them, but I'm going to read the text here. I printed it quickly just before I came on. This is what I said, and I won't even tell you who it's from. This person's probably watching. She'll know. I said, if you were given the assignment to design a sign and write a message on this sign to caution anyone going through uh, the door of God's holiness and God's throne room, what would you put on it for people to see before they entered? And then I directed her to read Isaiah 6 and Ezekiel 127. That's another one you want right here. So what happens when we fabricate, and that might be an assignment that you might want to take into consideration as you're looking at God through the biblical standard. But what happens when we fabricate our own idea of what God is? This is what happens. We struggle and wallow in cheap grace and shallow sanctification when we fabricate, fabricate our own God. Because we have departed from the biblical picture of who God really is, holy and exalted. That's his nature. God is indescribable glory. He dwells in unapproachable light. And yes, I did say unapproachable light. He is consuming fire and he is infinite holiness. That's the biblical characters of God. That's the nuggets that I found in the first four verses of Isaiah 6. And I'm sure there's a lot more nuggets there. But just read that passage if you want to get back to the realistic idea, not idea, because it's not an idea realistically who God is, biblically. And here's what's amazing. Here's what's amazing. He wants us to come close to him. He wants us to take time to have a relationship with him. And that's my heartbeat for this year, is to remember and be reminded and reacquainted with who God is. So that the rest of the stuff that I'm involved in, I put on a lot of hats in a week. I, we used to say a lot of hats, but I put on a lot of different shoes. That's the way I kind of refer to it. But every pair that I put on or every hat that you put on, we still need to be doing it knowing who God is. Hear me today when I say, all the other places that we visit during the day, whatever on our Facebook, our iPad, our Instagram, I can't even think TikTok, that's not the stuff that's going to give you the biblical view of God and the relationship that he wants to have with us. But if we look at his, those scriptures, just start there. And realize who he is. Take the umbrella down, throw it away, and let his spirit pour out on you. I'm just going to pray. Father, I just ask you, God, that this little few little nuggets that I just gave us uh, today, I pray, pray that it would be as real to them as it is to me. I pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that your spirit would pour out. But we would take that umbrella and we would throw it away. And let it pour out. Let us take away the busyness and the complacency and the other things that distract us from you and have moments of every day that we allow your spirit to pour onto us and in through us in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Thank you, Steve, as you lead us in another song before we close. Every 
those who need a special touch from you, Lord. We just ask that you, the King of all kings, who sees the whole world, who made every single person with every single cell in their body, can comfort, can, can just heal, Father. We just thank you so much for who you are, Lord. And we just ask that uh, you be with us as we go with your peace, Lord Jesus. May you bless those who've listened, and may we just have your comfort in your name. Amen. Thank you. 